it's Guido coming at you with a tactic stock. Welcome back, guys. And like I said, we've got MC950 from Clan SOK. He is back again today with another huge game in his RHM. Once again, shout out to MC for sending this in. Very helpful. All tier 10 battle, two artillery once again, and another great scout map. One of the two best, either Proc, this one, or Malinovka, the one we saw yesterday. Different situation here today. As I talked about yesterday, uh, looking at the idea that you know, if you show a lot of great scout games with only mana cores and 105s and such, maybe that somehow diminishes uh, the efforts. Well, we've got a couple of them here. We're in the RHM. Now, yesterday, what we saw was an RHM versus RHM, only one scout versus one scout. And MC made a really aggressive move and had a great example or a great result out of that thing. This one is a different story, fellas. We're going to see a great game, but the... The enemy has got an EBR and a Mana Core and another light tank and a 13105. So we're talking about a proc game with three lights on each side, one of them being an EBR and one of them being a Mana Core for each side. So this is going to be very interesting. I haven't seen this, so I'm very curious how MC is going to go about this. I would say that he's going to have to be a little bit more careful so that uber aggressive move we saw yesterday going across the field is probably not a player here. Uh, obviously, it's a different map, different situation in terms of places you can go. But the Magic Bush, I don't know if it's a player here. Not with an EBR and a Mana Core and another Light Tank. So, very curious to see how MC, MC handles this. Same setup as yesterday. CVS, LNES, and Optics. Uh, not very many heat shells in there. And we're running some food. We've got some chalk a lot. So, let's take it away with MC. I'm extremely curious to see how this goes down. He did have a write-up, and to be honest, I forgot what he said. I might look at it later and see if it's uh, apropos at all, but, well, obviously it's applicable. But I want to look at this as if I've not seen or heard anything about it, and to be honest with you, I can't remember. He did mention some of his thought process. Uh, he did know, obviously, that the 13105 EBR Mana Core involved, so that did uh, inform the way he was going to play his RHM. My, my question then is, how did it inform his way, and let's see what happens now. He's going to come up to the hill. So... Not a bad plan, guys. I, this may have been what I would come to as well, especially if I knew the mana core was going over to the 1-2 line, which it is, and we can see that. And we probably have the 105 raging. Yes, the 105 raging, and he is serping. So those two guys are going to where their strength is, and the third light's going to go up and try to help with the hill. A mana core on the hill from this side has limited capability of getting up there without being spotted. There is a fantastic spot for the south spawn right there in those bushes that if a mana core can get into it or something with a lot of camo is extremely difficult to deal with. A lot of times it gets blind shot as people understand, but we'd have been lit if that was happening. Maybe. This is a fast tank, so it's possible we'd get up underneath before somebody could get there depending on their spawn and how they drove up. So let's see if he catches one of their light tanks out right here. Being a bit unclever. There we go, okay. You gotta like that, fellas. We found this guy. We're gonna take our opportunity. I like the pause there. I would have done the same thing. That's unfortunate that that guy actually got that shot. When you go that far up on the hill, you have to expect to be shot at from the side. You'll note that he lit that guy, waited a few seconds, and then took his shot. Because as soon as the light bulb goes off on the 50-51, that dude is probably going to... Man, we had, a, we had an opportunity there, man. Uh, we had a huge opportunity. I think you might have got that shot without being spotted, too. So he was waiting a few seconds, then he shot, because as soon as the light bulb goes off, that 50-51 is going to start moving. So no sense in shooting him early and letting him back up, because the other thing that that little pause does is it allows your buddies down there to get their guns on, start zooming in, and maybe get a shot before he moves. Okay, so we're kind of working on this. I think I'd have fixed my turret, man. I mean, you might think that's not a big deal, but... I, don't, I wouldn't expect to really need it or to need the repair kit too much as I'm being stealthy, so I may have just burned that kit, fixed the turret, and moved on from there. I don't know what this 13105 is doing. This is kind of a suicide run. They're, he's going to allow people just to have all kinds of shots on him that can't really be returned. Yep, he just ate 977 from the FE, and down goes our 105. That, sure. Okay, so, well, at least there's uh, no more competition from the 105 for the spotting for MC. The Mana Core is holding the 1-2 line so far. We have not seen their Mana Core, nor have we, we have seen their 13105 and their EBR. So, my assumption, based on what we've seen, is that the Mana Core 
is over in the one-two line, the enemy mana core. The 50-51 knows he's there, right? He was lit, and that's another problem with getting lit up there. They know where you are. On this map, it can be extremely beneficial to not be spotted for a long time so they don't really know where you are. Some people may be able to work out to suss out where you are based on where they're being spotted, but if they don't see you at all, that can be a huge benefit on this map. So we are spotted though, so they know we're probably lighting them every time they pop. Maybe not that bad a deal. They can't go up there and set and get ready to shoot the 121. The IS-7 is getting absolutely bombarded. He's eating every artillery shot because he keeps getting spotted. The only guy on the 5-6 line is the 121. So even though we're sitting here and maybe getting some spots, we really don't have, in fact, we don't even have anybody. The 121 has moved across. That's a good kill right there. Their Sturve getting lit. How on earth did that happen? I didn't notice where it was. Very strange. That's bad. That's bad. That did ring a bell. I do remember MC saying the mana core died, and that started to make him think a little bit more about the 1-2 line. So the 1-2 line is in big trouble. Oh my goodness, what is this guy doing? Go back. There you go. Put that shot into him. Nice. And a track. Come on, 121. You got another shot. Oh, we did get lit. Those bushes aren't very good, fellas. I think somebody told me what the percentage on them is. I don't think it's very good. Maybe he wasn't quite 15. It, the bushes were dark, so as far as the distance go, he, he had that right. Um, just that guy ended up seeing him on that shot. That's unfortunate. So it's two to three. I don't think you have a whole lot of time on the one-two line before their mana core starts making a huge difference. There's two lights over there as well. There's a 13-105 in there as well. And we are down both lights. So we only have our hero in the RHM, and they have a mana core and an EBR-105. So the EBR is still doing EBR things over there. Nice. We're gathering up some more assist. This is a tough one, fellas. I mean, think about it. What, what would you do here? Would you abandon the hill and just hope the medium... And the Foch can handle it for a while? Go over to the 1-2 line? Or would you try to clean up this hill? Honestly, let's just take a think about this for a second. What is unspotted over there? The Mana Core, the 1104. I really think the 1104 is on the 1-2 line, fellas. Based on what I'm seeing here, he hasn't popped up at all. That is a low hit point T5051. I don't know if it's a one shot, so it might not be worth trying to push him. He might gun us down before we kill him. I didn't, I didn't pay attention to what his hit points were when he disappeared. But it's very possible that Soonly here, he needs to make a move to clean up this flank. And that will free him up then either to get in behind him and get some lights or to go to the 1-2 line. Or is he, yeah, he may be a little indecision here, guys. I feel him. I feel this for him right now. Because he's doing the calculations in the brain, right? Do I go to the 1-2 line? Uh-oh. Yeah, EBR just made a move. That's brutal. That is absolutely brutal. Guys are going to be getting lit. The enemy team's got all kinds of free shots. Let's see. Oh, they killed the grill. Okay. <laughs> what, where was the grill? Was he in the middle? <laughs> the enemy team is making some significant mistakes, which is bailing out uh, our heroes team a little bit, to be honest. And, and, ooh, how did a grill get spotted, fellas? You'll have to, you'll have to uh, rewind and take a look at that. I'm not sure where that dude was. That's amazing. So the EBR got out of there. He made a run, got out, lost some hit points for it. And it looks like we didn't lose much in terms of tanks. The Mouse is still alive. I don't think they have a whole lot of uh, snippers, right? What do they got? The 100 How'd we get lit there? That's bad. Oh, the Mana Core. The Mana Core has moved up. So the Mana Core is probably... Yeah, that's brutal. Oh, the IS-7 is angry. IS-7 is angry that day, my friends. He's <laughs> trying to get out of there. I feel for the IS-7 too, fellas. He can't do anything without being spotted. 13105 just made himself known. Hard to tell if that was a mana core or the 13105. I think it's not a bad idea. I'd get up underneath here and run that ridge. There's their EBR. The EBR is dangerous too. He might just YOLO in. I think... Oh, look out. Oh, come on, 121, really? All right, I think, honestly, I'd have come back here and run this ridge a bit and just see if he's in there. Like, is he right in here? Because you might have to proxy spot, spot him if their mana cord's got this close. Maybe not because he should have been lighting these guys all up. I don't know. I'm curious. Where is the mana cord, the world wonders? The mana cord could be up on the hill, too. 
Could oh, very nice. There you go. So now we are we're not worried about the YOLO artist, right? The YOLO artist is no longer a problem. That's good. Now just find this mana core, man. We do have a lead in tanks. That's nice. That's that little ridge is dangerous right now. I think, dude, because I think that mana core is so close. If one of their snipers is oh, we're gonna just go in. Oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. there he is. Found him. Found him. Very nice. Come on, fellas. Put a hit on that thing. Kill that guy. Look out. Already's coming. Manticore's bailing out. Boy, that was a lot of sound and fury, and we didn't get a whole lot out of it. Whoa, I don't know about this, man. I don't know about this. I think the... Ooh, is this, the Manticore's got to outspot you here. Boy. Ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> very concerned. Very concerned. We have a good lead, though. We have a good lead, but honestly, you are the only reason your team is not going to be in big trouble. Got artillery kind of going back into that known sniping spot where the TVP is. Boy, we could get outspotted here, to be honest. We've got 4,283 assists. This is a much tougher match than yesterday, fellas, because he does not have permissive environment, right? They're working on it. They've got two of the scouts down on each side, but the enemy scout is better on this map, just purely from the enemy scout tank side. It's the player, the setup, and uh, the moves they make at this point. Oh, wow, this is extremely dangerous. Yep. Oh, get out of... Oh, he fell... Holy cow, that guy got up. Oh, <laughs> And that is why the Manticore is dangerous. Notice that the, uh, the it was the IS-7 that just ran into him. The poor guy got proxy lit. IS-7 just rolled in there. That's fascinating. I'd love to talk to the IS-7. I wonder if he made that move because he saw that MC had moved up so much and he just figured maybe the Manticore wasn't that close. And now we have the permissive environment. It's important right now not to get overconfident. So he goes to the middle... Notice that we have the dynamic map thing going on here, and the problem with that is that that whole middle section is now difficult for a light tank to move through. All the trees, well, most of the trees, the bushes are gone. Let's put it that way. The bushes, for some reason, get wiped out, and the trees get knocked down. I don't, don't ask me. I don't know. The Panzer Seven went over to the other side to try to hold that other flank, and now he's getting gang tackled. One of their arties in, in that corner on the right, you just saw the shot go out, and the other one is lit on the tracks. They just killed the Panzer Seven. They just take down the 5051. Our Striv died. I don't... How? <laughs> Fellas, I gotta tell you. For UTD players, I'm not sure where is this, where did the Striv just die? How did he manage that? Oh, he went up there. Yep. Guys, 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 come on. Do not drive your TD ahead of your light tank. Certainly not on this map. That guy, that guy could have sat back and did some farm a ding dang man. And now he is in garage, wondering why he did that. 110 trying to make a move. We're at 4,593. Now this is, this game has a lot of assists. There we go, we just grabbed a bunch of the assists. This is actually very interesting. So it was, it was a good workmanlike game. Assist wise, you know, we're at five, six thousand. But the E one hundred managed to keep all of his hit points and now, because of this permissive environment, MC is able to gobble up the hit points on the E one hundred. I'd get forward, don't let that two sixty eight five have those hit points, man. See, I think you can drop down, dude. To be honest, you, you can drop down and kind of get to here. Don't let the IS seven C but get into these areas here and he's not gonna see you. Here we go. Yep, yep, yep. Perfect. Doing a really nice job with that. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's like a porpoise or a whale breaching. No one knew you were there until you just flew out of the water. <laughs> That's a bummer, man. Don't kill me. Oh, nope. Nice. All right. Didn't matter. IS-7's getting gobbled up. Big hit by the 55-58. Not sure why you're not shooting him. I think I would have put a gun on him and shot that guy. There we go. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, you got the last assist off of him anyway. <laughs> I think there's some extra assists in there. As I recall, the card, I think, said 10,000 or so. But he's got, I believe, over 10,000 assists, fellas. 653 damage. What a great example, right? Did not have the best tank for the map. Certainly the Mana Core and the EBR. EBR, EBR is questionable. I mean, as far as the Sprayed Roach act of an EBR, it can have big games on this map as well. But the Mana Core is certainly a better tank. You notice that the guy got really deep in there. You've seen me make that same mistake. You, you want to get forward, get a, get that assist, maybe get your snipers back there. As I noted, though, the purple team did not have a great lineup of snipers back there. They had an E100 and a 110E4 and not much else back there. Everything else has sort of started to die by the time you started working our way up the 1-2 line. So unfortunate for them. The Mana Core, I don't know what his assist was, but probably didn't get as many as he thought he might have been able to. Really nice job, though, on the initial decision-making to go over to the east side there and sort of work on that hill and neutralize slash turn it into a winnable flank for his team. The enemy team didn't send any lights over there, so they were all futzing around over here and in the middle. So really nice job, basically just took over one of the flanks, got a nice bunch of assists, and then when he saw the issue on the other side when his mana core died, came back over there. A little bit dicey to begin with because he's getting outspotted by their mana core, who I think was really deep, at least at the initial point there. Got the, the one light tank dead, then the EBR, their EBR made a mistake and died and was able to counter the mana core. To some extent, he was lit, but that IS-7 pushing in and kill him just broke up, broke open the dam and took total advantage of it from there eating up a couple hundred percent tier 10s, the 124 and the E100, for another nice, I don't know what, five, 6,000 assists chucked on top of everything else. Nice, man. Really well done. Appreciate that. Thank you for sending that in. Let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, hopefully that scratches the itch a little bit of the uh, Yabuts, where uh, Yabut, it was a good tank and whatever. I'm sure it doesn't scratch the itch of Yabut. That's really a, a great couple of scout maps. That is true, but if you're going to have fantastic results like that. It's probably going to be on a map that works to the strengths of your tank. And these are certainly two of the best scout maps. There's a couple others out there, but these are absolutely two of the best. That's all I've got today, guys. Have a great one. We will see you.